Order 66 was the most destructive moment in the history of the Jedi Order. In the decades after the Battle of Endor, Grandmaster Luke Skywalker faced his own major challenges. We'll discuss on today's video how he tried to prevent a second extinction of the Jedi Order. Hey guys, this is Zachary Slaughter. Hello and welcome to today's Star Wars Legends lore video. And we're talking about Grandmaster Luke Skywalker as he existed in the old Star Wars expanded universe, Star Wars Legends. Luke's life in Legends took a much different path than in Star Wars canon. He was successful in restarting the Jedi Order. He was married, he had a child named Ben Skywalker, and the Skywalker lineage passed on into the future. I really enjoy the story of Luke creating his new Jedi Order, and that's often just what it's called, the New Jedi Order, because it's interesting from both an in-universe and an out-of-universe perspective. When I talk about out-of-universe, there's the fact that much of the early years of Luke's Jedi training and his founding of the Jedi Academy actually took place before the release of the prequels. So the authors of Star Wars are sort of struggling with the creation of a Jedi Order based on something that hadn't even been fully fleshed out yet. But this actually worked fairly well, because Luke was starting the Jedi Order from a difficult position as well. Jedi of the past had institutional knowledge. They passed on the many lessons that they learned throughout the ages. Luke, on the other hand, was starting from scratch without many mentors, or at least initially other Jedi that he could speak to, in a galaxy which had done as much as possible to erase the history of the Jedi. So when you take those things together, it kind of makes sense that Luke's new Jedi Order looked a lot different from the Jedi Order of old. The authors were kind of making stuff up as they go, a lot of which would inevitably be distinct from the prequels, but that also just reflects Luke's differing philosophies. And I mean, the fact that he took a wife is really distinct when it comes to the Jedi of old, and Luke's just whole approach to the Force and running an order is also very distinct. In the early years of Luke's new Jedi Order, for example, there was not a Jedi Council. Luke was the final voice. He was the head of the Praxium. Every Jedi that he trained or which entered his order was ultimately and perhaps naturally lesser than him on the totem pole of New Jedi. There were several major events which shifted how Luke saw the Jedi's place in the galaxy, the final one being the potential for his order to be wiped out by the government, similarly to Order 66, but we'll get to that in a minute. I think it's interesting to cover some of the other history first. One of the defining aspects of Luke's character in Star Wars Legends was his continual struggle with the dark side. I mean, not only did Luke have a father who of course fell to the dark side, but Luke also temporarily became the new apprentice to Darth Sidious in the Dark Empire comics. Without true guidance and knowledge from his elders, Luke is also worried about using the Force in the wrong way. We get lots of that in the Thrawn duology, for example. And I think the best way to describe him is reluctant, although he's trying. Still, Luke would establish a Jedi Praxium or a temple on Yavin where he would begin training the next generation of Jedi. He lost several key students, either falling to the dark side or through combat, which of course made his reluctance greater, but Luke eventually did establish a fairly strong Jedi Order, with perhaps thousands of knights and masters at its height. By the Yuuzhan Vong War, the Jedi had not reached quite that potential yet. There were probably hundreds of Jedi in the Order, probably two or three hundred if I would guess, just based on what we get in the new Jedi Order. However, the invasion itself would nearly tear the Order apart. There was major division between Luke on one side and Kip Duran on the other side over how aggressive the Jedi should try to tackle tackle the Yuuzhan Vong problem? Should they engage in preemptive strikes? Should they work very closely with the New Republic or should they do their own thing? With Luke largely arguing that the Jedi should be passive and that they should work only in concert with the New Republic, with Kip Duran, of course, wanting to be a lot more aggressive in facing the threat directly. This would eventually lead to the establishment of a Jedi Council, although Luke would remain de facto leader of the New Jedi Order. The Yuuzhan Vong War, however, was very hard on the Jedi. Jedi. The Vong targeted the Jedi in particular. They offered to stop fighting if the Jedi were turned in. They created creatures which would hunt the Force. It was not a great time. Neither was the decade immediately following the Yuuzhan Vong War, which saw the fall of Jason Solo. Jason being
being probably the most prominent Jedi in the galaxy beside Luke and the hero of the Yuuzhan Vong War. By this point, the Jedi were looking a lot like the Jedi of old. They were stationed on Coruscant, they had re-established the Council as I mentioned, but Jason falling to the dark side threw a lot of that into chaos. The Jedi eventually became formal enemies of the Galactic Alliance, which was the successor state to the New Republic after Jason Solo initiated a coup. But the Jedi would weather this storm as well, although I imagine Luke was starting to wonder about the danger of being so closely associated with a single government. But the Jedi Order was flourishing, it had temples set up on Coruscant and across the galaxy, there were many masters and knights and padawans. However, Luke would play a part in something very, very, very stupid, which was the election of Natasi Dalla to the position of Galactic Alliance Chief of State. Now, Natasi Dalla was a former Imperial. By this point, the Galactic Civil War was old, but she certainly did still hold some old prejudices, as did many Imperials who were increasingly working their way back within the dominant government of the day, the GA. The public opinion of Jedi was also very, very low after the death of Jason Solo. Jason was basically becoming a mini Vader. He had initiated the Second Galactic Civil War, which I've discussed in prior videos, but almost saw the galaxy tore apart like the Clone Wars or the previous Galactic Civil War. And Jason's falling was seen as a major failure of Luke, so much so that Luke was actually charged by Dala with crimes against the GA and was forced to leave Coruscant and disassociate with the Order, at least for some time. This, by the way, all happens in the early Fate of the Jedi books. But making this even worse is the fact that as Luke is leaving the Jedi Order, the Jedi are struggling with a bizarre phenomenon known as Force Psychosis. I've also covered the basics of Force Psychosis in a prior video, but basically Force Psychosis was caused by the re-emergence of Abeloth, a powerful entity previously contained within the Maw Cluster. But the Jedi affected by Force Psychosis were often acting extremely violently and irrationally, and that was making public perception of the Order just that much worse. This all culminated eventually with an armed standoff outside the Jedi Temple. The Jedi inside were protecting and trying to help one of their own who was afflicted with psychosis. Well, Natasi Dal and the Galactic Alliance were ordering that the patient be turned over, and what they were doing with sick Jedi was locking them in carbonite and forgetting about them basically, so that wasn't a good solution to the Jedi. That led to the standoff. People were killed, and it was just not a good situation overall. At this point in universe, people are making the connection between Dala acting very Palpatinian, and eventually Dala was prepared to engage in open war against the Jedi Order. However, before that could happen, the Jedi would initiate a coup against the Galactic Alliance, and Luke would make the decision that the Jedi, and specifically the Jedi Order, needed to be its own thing. This was a radical change in thought. During the New Jedi Order, Luke had been advocating for cooperation with the New Republic, and even more than that, prior to the Second Galactic Civil War, Luke went so far as to give the Galactic Alliance and the Office of the Chief of State a formal position on the Jedi Council, despite them not being Jedi. Luke realized, however, after the Second Galactic Civil War and the events of Fate of the Jedi, that the government of the galaxy was just far too fallible, and especially sitting on Coruscant just opens the Jedi Council to the same sort of rot and decay that often befell galactic governments, and that was something also pointed out in the, and to a lesser degree, in Darth Plagueis. But that's only a small bit of the problem. The Galactic Alliance was increasingly seeing the Jedi as nothing more than a different, formalized arm of their military, and to be honest, that's basically how the Jedi were treated in the prequels. Luke realized that the Jedi Order had to be independent. Not only would they have to have the ability to do their own thing, because to be honest, in the Star Wars universe, and in all universes really, the government is not always acting in the correct or the morally right fashion, but it was also dangerous for the Jedi to be so close and within reach of the government. I mean, we saw Mandalorians at the behest of Natasi Dalla sieging the Jedi Temple, and the Jedi Order could have been destroyed if Dalla had been given more time and if the Jedi hadn't initiated a coup. So in order to prevent a second Order 66 or similar 
event, Luke made the, albeit difficult, decision to move the Jedi Order off Coruscant and, more importantly, to become the most independent Jedi Order of a very, very long time. But guys, that's all for today. If you want any more information about anything I talked about, feel free to let me know down in the comments and I can dig in more to any one particular aspect. But until next time, be safe, have a good one, and may the Force be with you.